Hello friend, welcome back to Toyota Maintenance YouTube channel. I had here in the shop today 2013 Toyota Tacoma 4-wheel drive crew cab. Very lovely. She's kind of unusual. 7 years old and she has like 42,000 miles only. She got a lot of good treatment. She got a new CV axle. She got a new lower arms because the bushings were shot and some other shop gave them estimate for almost $2,000 for replacing these and also replacing all the brakes, all calipers, everything and so on and so on. So I did a job for the owner but while I was underneath the vehicle I had the skid plate, the one here, I had to remove it to have a good access and inside of the skid plate was coolant, that super long life coolant. And I also remember last time when they were here, I did a very quick inspection just to confirm what that other shop quoted them. That was a little bit low, so I add it to the line and it's low again. So there is definitely some coolant leak. Standing underneath the vehicle, I had the coolant in the skid plate, but I also saw coolant leaking. Where is the radiator cap? But that was dry underneath the cap. It was underneath this clamp where the top radiator hose is entering the radiator so it was all wet right here so i'm like okay i will put it in the comments that i observed that i cleaned it off there's nothing here anymore and i just came back from a test drive so i tightened this a little bit i also remember last time when we popped the hood i told them hey what what's going on this is not original Toyota clamp so he didn't know or didn't answer it I don't remember it's a week ago so this is torqued tightened and I don't have any coolant but guess what I came and I pulled further in and we have again a coolant all over this is my problem I could have just say, hey, what I did, it's done. Park it outside and give it back to the owner. But he's my friend. We worked together in the past. He was extremely nice. I'm like, you know what, I have to recheck. Sure enough, why the cover is gone? Because I started looking inside. Let me grab the light started looking inside having it idling i'm like we have to make sure that everything is perfect and there is no presence of the coolant well unfortunately i see coolant suddenly all over here everywhere and this is what i discovered and when you look for these problems it will most likely not show up when the engine is off, there's no pressure, it needs to be running. Now a little warning, there will be moving parts, there is that cooling fan. So if you do that yourself, you're looking for some leak and so on, don't lose your fingers sticking them down there, being grabbed by belt or something. So we will carefully look at it together and I want to show you that there is actually leak. And it's not this one, it's not wet here anymore, but it's all over down there. Now we can actually confirm the mileage together, that I'm not making it up. This truck really has very low miles. I wonder why. C41789. Now let's go and look together on that leak. I guess I will never make it home. My wife already checked with me, hey, what is your ETA of getting home? I'm like, I don't know. I guess when you have a shop like this, you are married to it. 
and this is what I did. I started it up and I started looking down here. Look down there. I see a web. Now there is the pipe. Unfortunately, that's a scary thing, which brings forward coolant between the in the valley, basically here to the thermostat housing. So if it's shooting right there, that will be a nightmare. Look how wet it is there. Everything is not looking good. It's all soaked. Not here. Yeah, bear with me with this lighting. It's not so easy. So this is dry. Obviously the fan is blowing on it. So you just keep following and being safe, please. Once again, look at it plant. It's a second plant and it's not original. Now look, we starting having puddling of the super long life coolant right here. So in these situations, just be patient, but keep looking. I will change the angle. Really important. And this is what I discovered. And hopefully you will see it with me. I believe right there at the end of the front. It's not so visible. Oh, let me put the light there. There is hanging on it coolant. I believe the plant is not tied properly. Look down there. Uh, I'm trying to catch it for you and it has limitations here. I believe from the end of the upper radiator hose so right here where i'm almost touching it with the light right there oh yeah do you see it right now actually there are droplets flying away from there now over here when you're torquing on this clamp you have to be careful because this outlet of radiator it's plastic so it can be brittle you don't want to put too much torque on that clamp but here this is not soft material, this is pretty sturdy, so let's see. Uh -huh. I think that clamp is bad. It's very easy to loosen it. Oh yeah, it starts spraying like crazy. But the clamp, clamp doesn't want to continue. And of course I immediately decided to film it for you because it gives you idea what's happening when you decide to have your own shop, one man only. You are not employee anymore, you are fully responsible for it and as I said, uh, I don't have a heart to just park it outside and say, hey, whatever, I want to go home. And basically you remember this was leaking too and after I torque it a little bit more carefully it's perfectly dry so this helped but this one I'm afraid has to go something's wrong with it maybe it actually reached its very end and I have to basically use a smaller which is more suitable to this diameter and it's the next day customer left it with me so I am ready to replace this hose clamp and also this one is kind of questionable too so let's do the both let's do the right way let's see how much coolant we will actually lose doing this but I know it will be all over but we will put the truck out later we will use the hose with running water and that spill which won't be very big I hope not we will nicely clean it once again as we discussed yesterday don't do it when the engine is hot and there is pressure in the cooling system because that will explode out and since it's hot 
it will most likely burn the person who's removing the hose. Also, what I really need to do, what's really important, we saw the leak spring right there, but we have to examine this hose if the clamp didn't cut it, if there's no cut. In this case, we will have to replace the hose too. Now, this is again where it's not worth to rush it. So, this is the old hose. After I washed it, there's no coolant anymore. I kept looking if there is possibly a small crack which could be shooting. I see a little cut right here. It's not coming through on the other side. But, there's one more thing. This was cut perfectly when they were matching it to the vehicle. This, do you see how it's bad? It's going up and down. Somebody already make it shorter. I'm not sure what was the reason. Did the previous hose clamp cut into it and it was doing the shooting? I don't know. It was already trimmed. So I actually went in the store to get a perfect hose clamps and the new hose if they have it for 2013 Taco with 4 liter 1G RFE, obviously, right, engine. This is the result. My closest store, the quick to go store, it's only a mile away, it's a car quest, something local car quest, you can see here. And look at it. I asked him, hey, do you by any chance have this house? And he's like, oh, let me look, let me look, probably not. Oh, we actually have one. So now look, two houses, there's something missing. This is matching hose from CarQuest, obviously aftermarket, but this one was obviously aftermarket too. And it's missing inch, it's my thumb plus something. So inch and quart was already cut by somebody off. I asked him, I said, hey, give me most expensive, most fitting, perfect clamps. He said, this is closest I have. So my friend, Let's go and do the job right and see how it fits. Install it for this customer the way he will never need to worry about it ever again. Before I will put the camcorder on the tripod and we will put it together. Look at this outlet of the radiator. It's nice and shiny, it's smooth. And the hose, the surface will nicely sit on it. Look at this one, very typical. There is a rust basically and build up on it and that could theoretically kind of make that uh, contact bad. What will be the war will be compromise the sealing opportunities or uh, abilities. So I will always use a sandpaper and clean it first. Are you there? I hope so. I hope you are comfortable on that tripod. I will turn that sandpaper around and start basically carefully, not applying too much pressure. I will start cleaning this outlet, which seems to be, I will say it's a, is it aluminum, some cast iron, maybe aluminum, I'm not an expert on it. And then I will use my fingers and see how smooth it is. And I think I cut off those little bumps which were on it and I think we are ready to see if that new hose is actually correct length but something's up I think they gave me a wrong hose look when I put it here oh what is it doing it's coming right in middle here oh wait a second it actually might go the other way I'm just kidding you know so, I will install it on this outlet first, and there is a stopper, I will show you a detail, boom! Guys, we just figured it out, girls and boys, we just figured it out, that hose was definitely uh, cut 
too short before. Now it's time to install the clamp. I have it nicely all the way. I feel where is the ending of this outlet. It's somewhere here, so I will put it right between the end here and while holding it. So I'm feeling the clamp. I will not use power tool and do it quickly. The opposite. I'm feeling the clamp, how it's seating on that rubber hose, the radiator hose because I don't want to pinch it incorrectly or cut into it. And I feel it's sitting there good at this moment. I will not go all the way yet. Now I'm putting this one. And the same thing. I'm probably getting in your way, I'm sorry for that. But again, between where the outlet is, is and the end, I choose somewhere in middle. And carefully observing it, feeling that with a bare hands, not a chunky gloves. If I never want to hear in the future about this problem again, which is the goal here, correct? The customer doesn't want to be dealing with it. I don't want to be dealing with it. Nice, this is incredible. And now I start torquing it correctly. I don't know what is correct torque for these guys. I don't use the torque wrenches, but it's a, it's a feel. We discussed before, this can be harder because it's a cast iron. This is plastic and it's already seven years old. So be careful with this. This is a common sense, probably. That's what will help here. I don't want to have any leak. So I'm just rechecking. You can see in the beginning of video how it was when it came. This is the new clamp following the radiator hose. You can see how perfectly it's turned. It's not too short. And here we go. This is my other clamp. This is where it was spraying in the engine. So now it's time to go carefully clean off everything with the fresh water. We will add the coolant. You can see even here in radiator, this needs to be full. And we will let it idle outside for a while. And then we will see if we have still the spray here. And you guys are experts, you know, here we have aluminum engine. So there's no question which coolant belongs there. It is not the long life that was on the older one. It's a super long life from Toyota. You never open this when hot, but it's not hot. So I can immediately unscrew this. And we definitely lost a bunch of coolant. It was on the floor. I already wiped it off. That's unfortunate that somebody leaves a dog outside parking. So I'm carefully going. This coolant is unfortunately really expensive. I believe this retails for $32. One, this jug. So I'm pretty sure a lot of people tries to find some alternative. This is customer's vehicle. I want to have the best for them. Therefore, I'm putting expensive coolant. I will be not spilling it. It takes me a little bit longer. Okay, so now I spilled a little bit. We know we are completely full. We will not forget about the expansion tank. It's touching minimum, the maximum. It's basically almost all the way in the top. So believe it or not, this little thing, fixing this, already I will use almost half of this. Talking the money, it's basically $16 in the engine, just in the coolant. Now, uh, we will put back the radiator cap, boom, we will close this and that coolant most likely still will go down here. So 
After the idle, we will be checking it together. Let's go and clean it. The coolant which came out, I've caught in my mop. That's already gone, so I will be just gently using the shower, not even jet. I just don't want to have a debris of that sticky coolant there. But also, when the temperature will go up, it will start smelling. We don't want that for the owner. And I'm not using too much water or power pressure or something. I don't want to spray it in these electric contacts anywhere. I'm really trying to avoid that. So I came back, of course, to wipe it off without the engine running and I realized I didn't show you that clamp that's what it was there these were the original clamps here so that was removed and guess what bad news for the owner when you start looking very very slowly and in detail you find the things which you couldn't see before look at this rotor body connector area do you see this? It's completely ripped and broken towards to the engine. I don't know how that could happen. Again, this is low mileage vehicle. Somebody pushed on it this way inside and it completely cracked here. So I will put it in comments for him. The engine is running perfectly, so there's no malfunction yet. And it's another reason, good I didn't spray a lot of water around here. I was putting it all down there because if it entered here, it might have a serious problem and I will be scratching my head here for another day or two. Here she is, absolutely 15 minutes later. Let's see how much pressure we have in that upper radiator hose and how hot it is. It's safe to grab here really hard pressurized nicely and it's hot when I really grab it it burns so let's check our largest leak which was right there I believe we did a good job perfectly holding not leaking how is our primary leak which was slower everything is fine so we have finally end of this procedure we fix the coolant leak I can put back this top cover finish the paperwork and call the customer I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did give it thumb up I know you guys do a lot so I thank you that I thank you for watching and be subscribe I have way more coming your way soon see you later my friend